maybe you could give some tips to them as how they might improve their chances of getting noticed by their target labels. The only way to know if you're ready is to get it out into the industry and get that feedback. Which genre gets signed most? I'm so glad we were able to help this artist and this track and this label. One of the biggest problems that music producers face is getting their demos listened to by record labels and hearing back from them. Well, two guys have completely changed the industry in this regard, ensuring your music is going to get heard by the labels that you want and that you will get feedback or signed to the best label for you. I'm recording this from Amsterdam, hence not being in the studio, but the two guys we are talking about are Derek Clark and Ed Brew, and their service is called Label Radar. So I interviewed them and found out how you can ensure your music's more likely to get listened to by the label of your choice and how you can start building your career. So without further ado, let's meet those chaps and have that chat. Great, so Derek, welcome to the channel. Why don't you just give us a little bit of a background about how you are, where you are now, and yeah, how you got into this crazy music industry. Yeah, totally. So I'm from Boston, Massachusetts. I studied music business at Berklee College of Music in Boston. I've been a fan of electronic music ever since I was like, I want to say 14. Whenever Minecraft first came out, came across, you know, Skrillex and, and a lot of like just the really early dance music pioneers. Yeah, it was always my dream to be a music producer and have a record label. But I found, you know, studying business, I think my mind gradually shifted more towards really enjoying the business piece of it. So had a record label in college. And one of the major issues I had with the record label was, you know, finding unreleased music to release. It was always really hard. I'd be emailing hundreds of, of artists every week, just being like, hey, do you have any music to release? Is it the right time? You know, and, and actually I met Ed through that as well, because Ed was doing a compilation album for charity, which we'll tell you more about. So we, we formed a friendship. And then after college, I um, sort of fell in love with startups, worked at a startup accelerator for a couple different startups. Yeah. And then me and Ed sort of connected and, and went on this crazy journey together. So excited to, to get more into it. Cool. So yeah, Ed, why don't you give a bit of your background on this? Sure. Yeah. I guess for me, the kind of dance music bug hit when, and this might be a bit limited to the UK, but I think it was Cinnamon Toasts or Cinnamon Graham. I think they were Cinnamon Toasts back then. They're now Cinnamon Grahams and they did promotion where it was a dance EJ4 club machine. I feel like it was called. And it was my first experience of like building tracks with loops and that side of things. And it was just so addictive and, and instantly kind of sparked my creativity and was a really nice outlet that then got me into music production and then it wasn't until a bit later on when really the rise of dubstep in I, I mean I would say 2008 but obviously the glory days of like 2010 obviously came afterwards but I was at university and I heard Chase and Status Eastern Jam on the radio and I was just like what is that? And that kind of led me down the rabbit hole. And so I did production for a while, but then in building relationships there and networking with other producers, I ended up kind of realizing the level of time I would need to invest to get to the production level that I want to get to is mm. just like probably not going to line up. And there are already a lot of my friends who are making amazing stuff and maybe I can just help them on the business side. So I started gravitating slightly more like Derek into the, the business side of things. And I did a, a, a compilation of tracks to raise money for uh, Comic Relief. Just kind of started out small with a close group of producers and then eventually reached this point where I was like, why not ask Ramesses B? Why not ask like these big names and see if they've got anything? And it just kind of escalated and grew from there to the point that we then did a, a kind of a raffle type of thing. And, you know, Noisier contributed some stuff, Camo and crooked and all of my like absolute heroes got involved in it and yeah that opened then a lot of doors for me because we had this 78 track compilation that I just soloed and and got all these brand new exclusive tracks for and then a lot of labels were like actually could you do that for us kind of thing at the time I was doing a law degree and I was just kind of like what am I going to regret more in five years like not doing this or doing this and yeah so I was like you know what I've got the degree as my foundation to fall back on I'm going to pursue this music thing and see how far I can take it where it takes me and I worked with the guys at EDM District for a while Monster Cat I was doing sync licensing compilation licensing and I ended up launching my own sync licensing entity to kind of fill the the void of electronic music in adverts at the time simply born from watching a Mercedes advert where they used this absolutely terrible dubstep track 
And I was like, them, there's so many better tracks they could have used for this. Maybe they just don't know any better and maybe I can help them know better. So I started a, a venture around that. And uh, yeah, we got some great placements in video games and film. But ultimately, as I'm sure you know, sync is such a competitive landscape that it just wasn't really sustainable as a kind of like a, a freshly birthed venture. Like it, it was just way too inconsistent from a revenue perspective. So yeah, then um, ended up doing stuff in the kind of music tech world, did some talent management, influencer marketing, that side of things. And as Derek said, we got connected through the, the compilation side of things and just for, for years, uh, really uh, on the kind of back burner, we were just pitching each other ideas and realized mm -hmm. that we had this kind of shared mindset for for tackling problems in the industry and built a friendship and eventually Label Radar was was born from there. I'm about to ask exactly what Label Radar is, but going a bit off piste, I just wanted to say that I think there are some really valuable lessons that my viewers can get from the approaches that you've both taken there about being passionate about the dance music, kind of leaning into your personal kind of niche within that, in this instance, business, pushing yourself to ask, well, why not? You know, rather than saying, oh, why would it be me? You're like, well, hang on, why can't it be me? And then actually having the chutzpah, as it were, to actually go out and make it happen. So I yeah. think that, and then the collaboration that you've both had and built, bouncing ideas off each other. So there's just a few points there that I see time and time again with people who are, you know, have made a dent in the industry. Yeah, I think that's brilliant. So what exactly does Label Radar do? Just for anyone who's watching this who doesn't know yet. Sure. So in a nutshell, we are there to streamline and help reconnect the process of sending and receiving demos in the music industry. We're kind of looking at it as how fragmented the industry was, where you've got record labels getting way too many demos to be able to get through in a meaningful way over an email inbox. You know, they come in all different formats, sizes, there's no consistency there and it just takes so much time. And then on the flip side, from an artist perspective, you're in this horrible limbo phase where it's like, I'm going to send my demo out into this just black void of nothing where I'm expecting to never hear back. And that just became the norm. And we wanted to challenge that and be like, that's not OK. But we understand it from the label perspective of how they've ended up there. So what we do is we set labels up with their own submission portal so that then when artists submit to them through that portal, the artist chooses what they consider to be the best 20 second clip of their track. The full song is still there. It just mm -hmm. means that when the A&R at that label clicks play, they're taken straight to the heart of the track as chosen by the artist. And from there, it's just all about the music. And it's just, has it hit them in their chest and given them that kind of, oh, this could be exciting for us. For anyone who's spent any time with A&Rs, that's a significant upgrade from what you would otherwise get where it's like, clicking to points on a waveform, listening for one or two seconds and you're done kind of thing. So we wanted to make sure the artists get to control that first impression, but also the labels are just taken straight in. They can get what they need out of that that track within, you know, five to 10 seconds. And yeah, then there's a lot of layers built on, on top of it from there. But that was kind of the core premise that we initially built around was like, making it easy to find the hidden gems and then accelerate from there when you do find something that you like to then be like, okay, where is this artist at in their career? What's their branding like? All of that type of thing. Fundamentally around all of that, when the label is listening to those demos, we wanted to make sure that the artist knew what was happening. So they get real time notifications when their demos are listened to and what the outcome of that listen is. So whether the label has shortlisted it as something that they're interested in or skipped mm -hmm. it as something they're not interested in. And then we kind of have this not yet button now as well, where it's like this artist makes really good music, but we don't want to sign this track. So then they can kind of keep an eye on you as an artist over time as well. And if you resubmit to them, you you stand out visually in the kind of inbox of Label Radar, so to speak. Uh, yeah, that, yeah, that's great then. I mean, it, it's kind of doing a lot of services in one. Sorry, Derek, you were going to say. Well, one of the things like I'm, I'm personally really excited about the platform too is, you know, with, with all these labels, especially in dance music, let, let's say 100,000, you know, just it's so hard to find what labels are actually active right now, which we help with. We only show our, uh, labels that are currently active. If you do have a, a, dis a disappointing moment in your journey and a, and a label, especially one of the, the bigger ones, passes on your track, 
we really help you continue that tracks journey. So we'll recommend other labels that are looking for artists in your genre that are active on the platform right now. So we kind of are able to provide a much more connected experience in industry and, and help people find each other that might not have ever found each other uh, in the past too. So yeah, it's some, something to toss in there for as well. Sure. Yeah, just to build on that real quick, and I, I will come back to what what you wanted to ask, but just while Derek's raised it there, the mental health aspect of demo submissions is something that we've always been acutely aware of in terms of a lot of the time that is just going to be a negative response, right? Because it doesn't mean you're making bad music. It's just that a lot has to line up for you to get a track signed, especially if you're kind of sending it out willy nilly to a lot of different places, right? Like if you're being more targeted with your approach, then you're at least increasing your chances of getting that success. But we wanted to make sure that with Label Radar, it didn't always feel, you know, like you're just getting pushed back and pushed back. We wanted to try and do everything we can to help you find the right path for your track. So you're not always being reset to square one. That's quite interesting. So what mechanism is there, or is it indeed what Derek just suggested, which is the the recommending other labels that may well be interested in that if you got you know turned down by the the first one you went for exactly yeah we have some bumpers in place as well where it's like if you're trying to submit a track of a certain genre to a label that doesn't accept that genre we give you a warning like hey this isn't going to go well for okay. you kind of thing yeah but yeah as derek said it's also about each track has a journey right like it, it might be submitted to tool room at, at the beginning and they rebuff it but then it can go on from there right like the story doesn't have to stop there we can give you recommendations where it might find a, a home as well and that's kind of how we've tried to guide the artist as well uh, as best we can brilliant i mean i can relate to those trials and tribulations from both sides you know someone who gets a lot of demo sent to them and then having to find the time to reply politely mm -hmm. constructively but in the negative and I've, you know, the amount of feedback I've got from sending to labels where it's just like, no rubbish because they're busy. And I understand that now. <laughs> so that feels like a nice way that you've addressed both sides of the equation, really. It is a delicate process because obviously music creation is a very personal process, right? It's a, you know, when you send your track, it's, it's like, this is my baby and I'm hoping that you like it. I think you will like it. And then when you get that negativity, you know, when it's positive, it, it feels amazing, right? It's yeah, just, for sure. you know, comes with the territory. And yeah, but just the nature of a, a quick, curt reply often comes across as perhaps more negative than it was even intended. Yeah. Yeah. So I know that lots of my students and lots of my viewers at EDM Tips use Label Radar. So maybe you could give some tips to them as how they might improve their chances of getting noticed by their target labels, anything that you guys see over and over again that ends in the results people want. Yeah, I got one and then I'll pass it to Ed, but I always suggest people trying general submissions. So there's two different ways to submit a track on Label Radar. Either we call it a one-to-one -one submission or a one-to-many submission. So a one-to-one -one submission is sent to a, a specific label. You know, you can select multiple, but it ends up in an inbox called the My Submissions folder for labels. So a lot of the bigger labels spend most of their time in the My Submissions folder because they get so much music being sent to them. They can sort of spend all their time there. But if you submit in the one to many folder, it goes to this page called General Submissions. And so you get a lot of smaller mid-sized labels that spend a ton of time in this uh, kind of general demo inbox where it's available for 60 days for any label on the platform. So you can use the, the free light version of Label Radar for artists and once a month add in a track to General Submissions. You might get, you know, if, if the track's pretty decent, like dozen, couple dozen labels in interacting with it in terms of listening to it you'll be notified in real time anytime a label clicks anywhere on the track or on your profile but it's really a way to just put it out there and then you might connect with a label halfway around the world you never even knew existed so that, that's something me, me and ed typically recommend great and uh yeah ed is there anything else other than that that you've you can um, recommend yeah i would just say like what we're doing is getting you in front of that a and r and getting you your shot so to speak so everything else is kind of in your control so the things that i would be looking to do as an artist would be being very thoughtful in my 20 second clip that you know choosing the best point that i think is going to grab their attention and then also alongside that making sure my profile is fully filled out because once they do have that initial spark of interest that we're helping you get it's then really important that you have your profile filled out to follow up on that because that's the next thing they're going to do click on your name see your profile and if it's 
you know, the blank standard template, first of all, it is an, a little bit dampening on that interest because then they have to yeah. go and manually do a lot of work. Like just make it as easy as possible for them to see how great you are or to, to continue that journey of wanting to work with you by having like your social links on there, previous release spotlighted. Like we give you the tools to do this. So you lose nothing by putting yourself so that your best foot is forward when they do take the action to, to check your profile. Great. So I guess the flip side of that is, you know, what are some of the biggest mistakes? And it might just be people don't fill out their profile, but is there, are there any other kind of mistakes you see people making that results in frustration where it need not? I don't want to get the of and that's um so something Ed touched on earlier is the we, we give like a warning if it's um you know a, a genre that the label isn't looking for. So that's probably mm -hmm. one of the biggest mistakes we see is people we have a whole kind of system that reinforces intentional uh, submissions, but which we can talk about. But we recommend like really being intentional about where are you sending this track? Is it the right fit? Because if it's not a genre that the label has worked with past, like your your likelihood of it not working out is is way higher. So. So we, we recommend that even though we make it really easy to submit to still do your due diligence, you can look into the label's profile and label radar. You can see all the different genres they're looking for, how active they are. Any label you see will be active. Otherwise, they disappear if they don't actively you know go through music. But that, that's one mistake we see. So yeah, definitely be intentional about who you're sending it to. That's one of the biggest pet peeves I've had label bosses and A&Rs tell me. It's just like, why are you sending me a hard techno track when I release Funky House? <laughs> yeah, exactly that. And I guess to build on that, so we've been doing interviews with a &Rs for our blog, just from our label partners to be like, hey, what's some of the most important stuff that you look for? And tell us a bit more about your journey and, you know, shining a bit more of a light on the people behind the, the kind of accounts, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. One of the things that has come through really clearly on that is about how important artist branding is to them. So when they take that next step and they're looking into an artist like seeing a cohesive brand there and don't get it twisted like you don't have to have everything lined up 100% when you are sending your demo like when you think it's ready and you want to test it out test it out like there's nothing to be lost there but in terms of your profile and mistakes that people make I think a lot of the time it's kind of this like you'll see it in the inbox when you've got the demos all stacked there and you can see the artist names you can see which ones are more likely to be high quality and when you've got like a fully lowercase name or something that's just a really weird alias for example you kind of already go in expecting it's going to be slightly lower quality or you know when you click on the profile and the it, it doesn't have any proper branding on it it's kind of like okay but from those blog posts it really comes through how much they want to see cohesiveness and that side of things so as an artist to an artist I would be advising you to just get your brand together from like a visual perspective and that doesn't have to be this this massive daunting task it doesn't have to be something that you fully commit to forever but with tools like Canva and stuff like that graphic design can be a lot lot easier now even going through services like 99designs if you're not a creative person yourself you know there's a lot of options there to just get something workable that will mean that when an a &R does look at your profile, there's something there to build from or build around. And I think that's that's kind of the main thing there. One more too, actually. Yeah, okay. So a, a mistake I think that artists can make, you know, trying to polish it in terms of the, the track like too much in that sort of that, that feeling of, am I ready, you know, to be bringing it to labels? The way we look at it, like, the only way to know if you're ready is to to get it out into the industry and get that feedback. So that that's one mistake I think people can make in general is just waiting too long and it needing to be too perfect versus like, just get it out there. There's one way to find out. And, and you're in an ecosystem where it's a safe space for music that is still in its uh, kind of infancy and, and it's not polished. And, and that's the point, you know, like to, to get it out. The eternal producer conundrum, isn't it? Like seven hours working on a snare and then deciding to <laughs> completely rework it and never never being ready essentially but that's it and be ready for the and willing and accepting of the feedback which is easier said than done absolutely um, yeah. <laughs> yeah so how do labels generally evaluate submissions you mentioned the kind of general pool where whereby they kind of look through but within that say if if a label was to go into that general submissions pool how might they go about passing all of these submissions are like are the ones that listen to more highly rated or what's the system there? A couple of things to 
to mention there. So we have a, an app that lets fans vote through music. So it's, it's anonymous. You don't know who the artist is. You don't know who the label is. It's a, only the 20 second clip. Artists can opt out if they don't want to have it in the fan voting pool, but fans swipe through. They can, if the music gets signed later, it gets unveiled. If the label signs it and then releases it to fans, they can actually see, oh, is this artist, is this label kind of like a game? And then they earn scout score points. Are they the top scout in their genre of choice? So labels actually use a lot of this data when going through submissions to, to kind of see, you know, from this sample size of fans, how did the fans react to it? And it's baked in marketing because if they sign it, they can then push it as a push notification to all the fans. And there's other ways to go about it too, that the clip like Ed mentioned, that's a really big piece is, uh, you know, does it catch their attention? And they can also filter by all these different variables, like what country is, is the artist in by genre. And, and we also have a feature called artist watch list. So just like favoriting a following a artist on Spotify, a label can add an artist to their artist watch list. So then if they're going through their submissions, that sort of just jumps out because they, they see, oh, this is an artist that me or someone on my team has flagged previously as really promising. We want to keep an eye on them. And circling back to rejection, some artists end up on artist watch list, even if a demo is skipped because it just, maybe the label's release schedule is full. Maybe it wasn't quite there, but you can end up on an artist watch list. So we recommend as an artist to submit to labels that are already watching you because you'll just have a little bit of an advantage. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. The other thing we launched earlier this year is uh, Discover Artists, which kind of takes it from that initial track discovery method and turns it into more of like an artist discovery method so basically the great thing about it is it leverages all of your activity on the platform to date so that even as you go everything that happens to you and your tracks on label radar can count towards your discover artist profile and basically what we do is we let labels then search the entire database so you don't even have to have sent them a track and they can discover you and show an interest in you and basically they could do for example who are the top base house artists in the netherlands according to our platform data or who are the top tech house artists in brazil according to our platform data and it just gives them these other jumping off points and discover ability areas and avenues outside of just who has sent them a demo so what that means is that on the flip side, the platform is always working for you as an artist to help get you in front of labels in different ways without you necessarily having to always have made a submission and, and that side of things. That's great. So almost like a really good manager or agent kind of working <laughs> behind the scenes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so a couple of questions that I've had from my students. The first would be, can producers submit previously released music, I guess, with the intention of perhaps impressing a label with previously released music that has been really good? Yeah, I mean, we don't have a set rule against it, assuming it's self-released, obviously. The only caution I would give there is that labels would find, typically in our experience in conversations with labels, they would find it a bit of a knockback if that track has already been released and done the rounds kind of thing yeah. they they tend to like to get the inside track on these things and be working with stuff that's new exclusive all of that side of things so to give again going back to what we were talking about at the start of like giving yourself the best possible chance typically that would be an unreleased demo but if you do want to send something that is released you know maybe it's gaining traction and you're like I want to to tag in a label to take this to the next level that's a slightly different positioning to mm. I self-released it it didn't do that much. And now I'm going to try with a label. Like, yeah, I would say you're setting yourself up for a harder path if you go that route. Yeah. Yeah. One, that one thing that, to add there too is, um, so whenever a artist uploads a song to the platform, we scan it for content ID and it'll also let the label know whether or not it's already on uh, streaming platforms which mm -hmm. you know, we'll, we'll show in the, in the report. So just something to keep in mind, if, if it's already out on platforms, labels sort of can see that as well. So I guess that kind of ties in with the next, which is whether it's possible to, or allowed to submit remixes. Yeah, I mean, remixes is a fun one because we host a lot of remix contests ourselves. We love remixes. We think that that whole avenue of creativity and the ability for an artist to really kind of launch their career by attaching to the success of another artist release and, and putting their own spin on it i think that is a very viable way like a, a seven lions you know and and those types of careers there's a lot of examples of this working and so we try to foster that in a positive way ourselves by hosting remix contests and other opportunities that are kind of career accelerating opportunities for artists whether it's like compilations sync briefs 
those types of things. Mm -hmm. But I would say as a general rule, if you send in just a, a random remix that you've done, first of all, if the label isn't the label that released the original, they're, they're just going to be like, why have you sent me this? So definitely don't do that. If they yeah. are the label that sent the original, sometimes it's of interest, but just generally speaking, if they haven't gone out and done an open call for remixes, again, you're just giving yourself a harder path to a successful outcome there. And why not work on a remix when they open, you know, an official challenge contest, however they do it. You know, we have enough launching every week that if remixing is your thing, there will definitely be some really, really cool opportunities for you waiting there. I mean, we've done them with everyone from Tiesto to Dead Mouse to Flodan, all kinds of stuff. So yeah, I would just say make it easier for yourself and go for one of the actual live contests rather than kind of this throwing a, a knife in the dark. That's a really weird really weird <laughs> comparison uh throwing throwing a dart blindfolded maybe is a better one but yeah just give yourself a, a better chance than than kind of going in a bit wild like that okay great and another question from the community is what are the most successful genres on label radar and i guess the way to quantify that would be which genre gets signed most i guess i'll be curious to get your thoughts on this derek but for me it kind yeah. of comes back to who our label partners are and that kind of dictates like i wouldn't say there is a most successful genre i would just say it comes down to the fit for the partners and i mean our kind of network of labels is very electronic music centric we have had music sign that is outside of the electronic music spectrum like a metal band for example but on the whole it's very much you know your drum codes your tool rooms your defecteds monster cat those guys and the music that they're looking for so if you're making music in those styles then you're more likely to get signed to them if you submit it to them but to be honest it's it's that new that nuance to me is like you could have the best techno track ever but if you're sending it to a label that isn't interested in techno you're going to have the perception that techno is an unsuccessful genre right so yeah yeah as i mentioned like i feel like a lot of people think of label era they think of electronic but there's we support a bunch of different rock genres pop chill hip-hop and uh, so we're, we're growing a lot in those areas but our roots mm -hmm. really came from electronic yeah i would say the most submitted to genres is, is the house sort of category of genre but we're actually so we're a part of the the beatport group family of companies now so we're pushing some updates next week which is really exciting so you're going to see a little bit of an update on our uh, electronic music genres to to mirror beatport so that'll be really exciting as well and yeah, you mentioned oh sorry i'd go for it no i was just going to add you know we've we've seen quite a lot of requests for funk as well as kind of an oh, yeah. emerging genre so rest assured that will be covered as well <laughs> really really excited to update the genre tree yeah i need to make a video on that i'm sure <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so you mentioned some absolute top tier labels there in the last question so I guess my natural curiosity is you know do you have any success stories that you'd like to kind of highlight with labels or artists that people may have heard of and it happened that label radar was the conduit that made that happen success stories are something that Derek and I could talk about for hours and hours days and days it's like our favorite topic of conversation to be honest because I think when we started this journey it was like we can build it but will it work? Like fundamentally for it to work, it has to be helping labels discover gems that they otherwise would have missed out on, right? Mm -hmm. And we fully believe that the talent was there for to justify that, but there's always the unknown, right? Will it actually happen? And I mean, we proved the model very, very quickly in terms of like, that belief that there was the talent that was being missed very very quickly we got the the kind of support through success stories and artists getting signed very very early on and then now we're five and a half years down the line and there's so many success stories so so like thousands and thousands for me are just the best thing because it just proves everything that we set out to do was valid and the the tracks that have come out like i'm a massive fan i keep a close eye on like the music that is being signed and i'm just like wow i'm i'm so glad we were able to help this artist and this track and this label i mean to give some some specific and quite a lot for ncs you've got like roy knox Bessomorph 
or Bisamorf. I'm actually not sure how to pronounce his, his handle, but I mean, those guys are, are smashing it. Max Braun, you know, I think it was Cyberpunk was his one that got, got signed that kind of was the initial launch point. And that's done tens of millions of streams. Then one that Derek and I were, were a big fan of was Scores, Brazilian artist who got signed to Armada with uh, Come to Life. And that track is just absolutely beautiful. And there, I mean, I've got a Spotify playlist that I, I, I'm kind of working on in the background of tracks that I love that have been signed through the platform. And, you know, just looking at the stream counts down that list is just like wow, this is awesome. And not only that, but the stories that they tell us about, like, I was trying to get signed to this label for like two years and then they joined Label Radar and two weeks later I was signed to them, you know, stuff like that, that, as I said before, is just feels so good. So validating. Yeah, I can imagine. I mean, Derek's just shared a link to the, the page. So what I'll do is I'll pop it under this video anyway. So if anyone's interested in seeing your other success stories, they can click on that and check them out. For sure. Sounds and good. when you scroll down that page as well, what I love seeing is all the different country flags is like it really kind of reinforces how global this is and how we have hopefully connected the world in a way that it wasn't necessarily possible before in terms of democratizing access two key decision makers who typically you needed to have an in with to be able to get in front of now it's kind of anyone with a, a computer and a digital audio workstation installed on it and an internet connection has the same playing field so yeah that's really fun and when you are scrolling down that list just keep in mind we are due an update on that list. It, it hasn't actually been updated for a little while now. So yeah, maybe a couple of years, yeah. potentially we're, we're going to do a whole new page that's more, you know, well-designed and exciting and then gathers yes. like real time success stories and, and updates real time, oh, nice. um, which would be, which would be exciting. Excellent. Yeah. yeah. I'm sure a few of my students will be on there as well. Are already on there. I'm sure I've been recommending you guys for a couple of years and for good reason. <laughs> Thank so you. Um, another question from the community is whether collaborations with other artists are possible. And I'm not really sure what they meant by that, but what I'm guessing they mean is, you know, the community aspect where you might connect with another artist on the other side of the world who produces similar music and be like, oh, shall we do this track together? Yeah, yeah. So we're working on a, a feature called Artist Network, mm -hmm. and we have these 178,000 artists on the platform. As of right now, they can't really see each other. So we're launching a lot of features, one this month, but the more collaboration piece will come a little bit later in, in a few months. But yeah, we're really opening up that database so artists can see other artists that are having tracks signed. They can connect with other artists. And one of the most exciting pieces is on collaborator discovery, because we did a survey and a couple thousand artists answered the survey. And the number one reason why they don't collaborate is they just can't find other artists that are, you know, similar to them that also want to collaborate. So we're gathering all this data, like what DAW do they use? What genre are they in? What label watch list are they on? What country are they in? We're going to also know city and then they'll be able to mark themselves as are they open to collaboration, you know, remotely or nice. in person. And then we'll start to suggest people that are open to collaborate that are active on label radar that you can connect with. And then you can work on content together. You can submit content together, tag each other in tracks as, as collaborators. But yeah, we, we just want to help artists be more connected. And, and it's such a shame that the number one reason people don't collaborate is they just can't find others that are like-minded that like right now are open to it. So we're really excited to, yeah. to open up that can of worms and, and really have more support there. Yeah, it sounds like a great idea, a great addition. Absolutely. Just to add one little bit in there is right now you can submit a collaboration as well, just in case that's what they were asking. You can okay. submit a collaboration that you've already made. But obviously what we want to do is what Derek's just alluded to is like help connect the dots as we have been doing in other areas, but for artist to artist collaboration. Fantastic. So now one of the questions we've had again from the community is more the technical side of things of using the platform, which is how producers would manage their submissions and track their status. I guess it would be in a dashboard or something for each profile, but perhaps you could perhaps you could let us know a bit more about that, please. So when you go into the platform, there's different ways you could end up on LibWater, whether it's, you know, you went to a website like monstercat.com and came in through their submission portal. Whenever you upload a song, it ends up in this page called my tracks you don't have to keep re-uploading the same track over and over if you want to try different labels you kind of have that one track file if you click on this button called view you can see all the different places that you sent it and get all the different status updates you also get them through notifications but yeah you can you can see all the the feed of activity happening on that track in my tracks you know the the view page and then you can resubmit it so if you go to the submit to labels page and you click submit an existing demo you manage that single demo without having to you know have many instances of it it's it's really intuitive you could resubmit it and then it's all in just one place all the data on 
how labels are engaging with it how fans are engaging with it, you know, any conversations you have that are relevant to that track. We, we have conversations on the platform where similar to the, to Bumble, the, the dating app, where only one side can start a chat, you know, women using Bumble sort of can start a chat. It, it's very similar with Labeldar where labels can start the chat and it's, it's by track as well. So if you, you know, go to your track, go to messages, you can see all the relevant conversations you have with labels by track and they can send a sign request. You can choose whether or not you want to confirm that sign request. And if you do confirm it, it sort of ends the the chat for any of the other labels. So there's a little bit of fear of missing out. You know, hopefully that's going to end up yeah. with artists getting better terms as well by it being a kind of just a, a more competitive place for, for everyone. Our artists have more options. But yeah, super intuitive. Just a, a dashboard when you log in, you know, hopefully it's, it's intuitive once you're in. But yeah. Excellent. I mean, that kind of answers the next question, which is what happens when a label wants to sign a track? You, you just yeah. mentioned that the uh, user or the producer will be notified with a sign request from that label. That they yeah, can exactly. Read through the um, terms and e-sign or something like that. Typically, you'll have received a message beforehand. Some of the label partners like to take conversations off platform over email as well, which we you know, are totally fine with whatever fits their workflow, it will result in the the notification and, and that side of things. If a label likes a track, before they start a chat with you, there's kind of an in-between state called the shortlist. So if they like it, they can shortlist it. The artist is updated whether or not it's on the shortlist, but it's before the, the label has, you know, committed to a release. Maybe mm -hmm. it's an A&R or an A&R intern adds it to a shortlist. And then a lot of these labels have uh, an A&R team meeting. So they'll go through the shortlist and choose whether or not they want to continue with that track. And then they can enter a chat if it makes sense. They have 30 mm -hmm. days to take that next action to avoid the kind of paralysis of if you're an artist and you've been shortlisted being like, okay, but, but what now, you know, yeah. we don't want the labels just kind of keeping them in, in limbo. So yeah. we yeah. impose a, a time restriction on it. Okay. Um, Fantastic. I guess one thing that I would actually add on that kind of ties into this is in terms of the labels that we have on there, just going back to what we mentioned earlier, we try our best to curate the new label partners that we allow into the platform. We actually reject about 85% of the label requests we receive because for us, it's really important that we're presenting artists with valuable pathways for their music. Now, obviously, it's not a perfect process. We can't 100% vet every label from the outside obviously but we do have some functionality coming that's going to help artists understand what that experience with a certain label partner could look like based on reviews from other artists that have gone there before Derek do you want to talk about that maybe a little bit yeah we're, we're a network of human beings all over the world you know that love music it's all these different people you know from different backgrounds and in the music industry, either an artist or a label. As Ed mentioned, we, we curate every request that comes in, but labels can change over time. It can be a different owner. It could be new employees, you know? So just like Airbnb has accountability or any of these platforms like eBay, you know, we're, we're going to introduce some layer of accountability. So as, as Ed mentioned, artists can give feedback on how their experience was with the label, but without being an overly generic system where it's like a star rating or something, we'll, we'll have different, different things they can leave feedback on, like the, the communication, the value of working with the label, the professionalism without any kind of star rating or anything. It's a little more just, was it a pleasant experience? Does it need improvement? Was it kind of just average, you know? And so, and the whole goal is to make a platform that has everyone sort of step up their game and, and it's just a much more pleasant place to be because there's a little bit of that social accountability to the community like are you acting in a way that is sort of professional yeah, yeah. again you're saying ideas and then it's like ah oh, that's such a good idea like i can see <laughs> how that could have been useful in so many situations you know with artists getting burned by labels or artists just simply letting labels down because they're not holding up their end of the bargain so i love that you know it's like when you get into an uber it's like you're going to behave well and the driver's yeah. going to do a good job and you both benefit from that totally that's it. totally awesome so it sounds like there are opportunities for artists at all levels but i guess something that people would be interested to know whether they can get feedback perhaps if something isn't quite up to scratch yet do the labels ever say perhaps tweak this try learning how to process drums better and then come back in a couple of months with and show us what you got we try broadly to keep a wide array of labels on the platform so it's not just your you know drum codes and your monster cats there's also your kind of small to medium emerging labels as well that can be nice stepping stone labels for for talents as well and 
whilst if you submit to uh, one of the biggest labels, but simply by virtue of how many submissions they receive, you're unlikely to get much more feedback outside of, yes, we're interested or no, we're not. But for the medium to small tier labels, a lot of them are fostering communities. And part of that is by giving additional feedback to artists. And we have a system in place for that where when they decline a track, they can give a reason why they've declined it. So that's where they can add in context like it's too similar to one of our existing roster artists or the mix and master needs work or the snare isn't quite sitting right in there or whatever it happens okay. to be. And so you can get the additional feedback there usually by one-to-one -one submissions, but sometimes they will do it on general submissions or the, the one-to-many submissions as well. So yeah, I think that's where it's kind of about being smarter with who you're submitting to, because if that's the stage you're at as an artist and you really want to prioritize feedback and, and growth, then mm -hmm. maybe go after the kind of small to medium sized labels because you're more likely to get that feedback. Whereas if you're always going for the kind of big swings you're unlikely to get more than we're not interested or we are interested hopefully right. that's a quick tip too by the way on that note so you can actually see which labels give feedback and how often they give feedback if you go into their profile yeah. there's a button called uh, activity so we, we wanted to reward labels that that are putting in the time to give feedback so if, if you want to only submit to labels that give feedback in some capacity you, you can you can spot them that way yeah i guess the only thing really to touch upon is brass tacks really because you mentioned a light version earlier so i'd be really interested to hear in how the payment structure works for i'd say if if we focus on the the producers because that is predominantly who's going to be watching this video that's mm -hmm. my community so yeah there's is there a free version and what does the premium offer that the free one doesn't in building what we built we knew that we needed to have some friction in the platform to avoid it just becoming a kind of everyone spams everyone and it becomes like a this is why we can't have nice things scenario right <laughs> so what we do is we have a credit system and we give artists credits for free every month and that's their kind of quota and they can spend those however they want but then if they want to go beyond that they would need to purchase additional credits or complete certain actions where they can redeem credits or become a paying subscriber so yeah just wanted to kind of paint that picture because not only does it help keep everything healthy for everyone, it also acts in the artist's best interest in a way in that instead of sending 10 tracks to a label, they're then forced to be a bit more intentional, as Derek mentioned earlier, where it's like, okay, what is my best track and which one do I think is the best fit for this label? Because I can't send them all 10. I'm going to have to be a bit more tactical. And then that way you're kind of increasing your chances of success because when a label is listening through and if they get let's say 10 tracks from you all at once it's a bit less impactful than just like here is my best yeah so an important piece too is that uh, so if a label doesn't log in for four weeks they automatically unlist so the labels that you are seeing are only are, are active and they're only yeah they're using the platform it's not like any dead end that you're going to submit it to within 30 days if they can't listen to your song and get to it your credits are automatically turned to your account for that submission but the submission remains uh as you know free so we, we really live or die by making this thing genuinely fun and, and easy to use on the label side. So we're always shipping features to make it just more and more convenient, more and more fun for labels to, to stay on top of this music. So yeah, that, that, that's an important layer. And then uh, in terms of the, so if you want to pay for the premium version, as I'd mentioned, it's, it's not necessary. It's just helpful in your journey with a couple different features. Like one of the most popular perks is that you get a, we call it skip the queue perk so your your track skips to the very front of the line so instead of being number you know 80 or 100 you're number two number three and you're you're prioritized in the queue so you get their responses that much faster and there's a ton of other perks in there like you can see your artist watch list placements you can edit the or update the track version so track version 2 v3 v4 and then yeah just tons of different perks along with much higher submission threshold every month you get a big basket of credits to spend that accumulate over time and yeah we're always looking for ways to improve that as well so we have a ton of improvements coming in, in the next couple months for the the pro especially around the artist community aspect yeah you can think of it kind of like the in subscription on linkedin or with dating apps you know they, they have the premium version but you can still use the basic version and, and still have success with it but yeah we're we're kind of modeled in a, in a similar way you can get signed whatever your membership status yeah. is it's more just like if you've got a lot of music ready to go or you're wanting to move a bit more quickly then the pro membership makes sense for you i think we we actually have a, a discount code for you for your for your 
your members as well for our annual subscription. So we can yeah. drop that in the description. That's brilliant. I've been telling my accelerator students about that. My job is to get them to a professional level and then they can move over and start, you know, getting signed on these labels. But roughly how much does it cost for people to join the premium version? So it's fourteen ninety nine currently as of oh, okay. October fourth, twenty twenty three. You know, we, we try to price it at, at the right level where it's it's affordable, but it but it's still premium and in, in that there's like the right balance within the ecosystem of, of not everyone sort of being pro and, and to maintain some of the advantages that pro gives you on, on the platform. As Ed mentioned, we'll have the, the discount code for your community as well. And, and you do get a discount already if you purchase annual. So this will make it even more um, accessible. And before we sign off, as it were, is there anything you guys want to touch upon over and above what we've already talked about? Good question. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> anything that you think that we've missed that would, people would find helpful? It'd be good to know from your community if there's any labels that we don't have on the platform that they would love to see. And we'll, we'll reach out uh, to them to, to get them on the platform as well. Brilliant. Yeah, and that, okay. that's a good point as well is like, we're always adding new labels. We're always adding new contests. There's always something new to check out and obviously the new features as well. So I definitely recommend kind of checking in quite regularly with the platform if you know you don't necessarily see a label that excites you right away i would hope that you would but you know there's always new ones coming in and you know by all means drop a comment on this video with a label that you want to see added and you know i will go hunt them down <laughs> i mean i'll ask that in a pinned comment underneath and hopefully there will be a place where we can easily review <laughs> what people are suggesting Brilliant. Oh, All yeah. right. Thank, well, thanks very much for, for having us on as well. Really, really appreciate it. It's been an absolute pleasure to meet you both. I know we've met beforehand, but it's been really nice having you here. And I'm sure that the viewers have got a lot of benefit from that. And anyone who hasn't checked out Label Radar yet, there's a link below. So you can check it out and see all the features basically and how it's going to help you. And really appreciate Brilliant. what you're doing for the community as well. Yeah. Oh, thanks, man. I appreciate that. <laughs> All right. See you both soon. Right. Bye. Take care, guys. Bye. Cheers. Bye. Cheers. Bye. So there you go, guys. Hope you enjoyed this video, found it useful. Don't forget to check out Label Radar below and get the discount code for EDM Tips students. And if you want in-depth coaching to get your music to a level where labels actually want to listen to it, you can check out the Accelerator program below this video too. Thank you so much for watching. Cheers from ADE and happy producing.